Father God, we just thank you so much for your presence in this place this morning. Come on, church, if you're thankful, just begin to lift your voice. Clap your hands. He is worthy to be praised. He is worthy to be honored. He is good. He will always be good. He is faithful to you to the very end. God, we're just so thankful that you would just bless us with your presence here today. And as we, we sang this song, the word exalted just kept coming coming up to me because there's, you know, we're, we're ending 2019. Some, some may have ended 2019 with the best year ever. Amen. Who's that? Give me some praise and shout today. But, but some of you might be carrying some circumstances, some, some health issues, some financial problems, some relational issues into 2020. But I, I promise you, if it, you have exalted Jesus above all of those things, he has far better things for you in store. Amen. And it's all about focus and focusing on who God is and who he wants to be in your life. And we're going to prophesy a little bit here today as we begin to sing a new song. And in our prayer point, our weekly prayer point in Psalm 96, verses 1 through 3, it says this. Oh, sing to the Lord a new song. Sing to the Lord, all the earth. Sing to the Lord. We're being reminded that we need to praise. We need to open up our mouth and sing a new song to the Lord. Bless his name. Tell of his salvation from day to day. Declare his glory among the nations, his marvelous works among all the peoples. And so today I want to try and teach you how to sing a new song. I want to try and walk you through. And as the band begins to play, we're gonna, I'm going to teach you. You might say, Matt, I don't know how to sing. It doesn't matter. It didn't say in the Bible, uh, hit the C note and make sure you're on B flat. It doesn't say any of that. 
It says, sing to the Lord. I don't care what you sound like, but you have something to sing about. Maybe... Maybe you have something to sing about from this year. You're like, God, I, I thank you for blessing my family and saving my children. I thank you for saving my marriage and providing me a home. I thank you, God, for giving me a job and financial stability. That's something to sing about, isn't it? But maybe going into 2020, we want to have a new vision for our life. You can prophesy about that. God, thank you for saving my marriage that's failing right now. Thank you for the new job that you're going to provide for me. That's what you can sing to the Lord. You, you can sing your prayer to God, and it begins to be a praise among the nations. The nations doesn't have to be Africa. The nations doesn't have to be Taiwan or Russia. The nations could be your children. The nations could be your family, your friends, your workplace. Maybe that's your nation today. And as you begin to prophesy, as you begin to open up your mouth and praise the Lord and begin to sing a new song, people will be blessed by it. So as the band plays, I want to teach you how to sing a new song. Just begin to open up your mouth and say, thank you, Jesus, for my life. Thank you, Jesus, for my, my, my family and my relationships. And you begin to sing and be like, God, I praise you. God, I worship you. Come on, church. I need to hear some, I need to hear a new song come out of this house right now. Just begin to open up your mouth and begin to praise him. Prophesy over your future. Prophesy over 2020. Prophesy that you will get that new job, that you will get supernaturally blessed financially. Come on, church. Begin to sing it loud. Open up your mouth and sing a new song. Come on, declare your healing. If you're if you're ready for healing in 2020, even today, it doesn't have to, you don't have to wait till January 1. It can happen today. Come on, if that's you, just begin to prophesy and sing that new song. I pray right now in the name of Jesus that God bursts something brand new in you. God, that a flame rises up on the inside and ignites every single one of your people in here today to begin to sing and sing unto you and sing to the nations to bless your holy name and declare of your salvation. God, we honor you this morning. We give you all the praise. We give you all the glory, your worth, everything that we bring to you this morning. In Jesus' name. Come on, church. I need a shout of praise if you are ready for 2020. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I just heard the Holy Spirit um, give me several words for people, and I just want to release what I'm hearing God say. Um, <clears throat> Amy, 2020 will be a year of breakthrough, and as you proclaim it, you will see the very words of your mouth come to pass. Hallelujah. Amen. Kathy, up in the video room, I'm talking to you, hallelujah. I heard the Holy Spirit say, restoration is coming to your house in 2020. The Lord says, your prayers have been heard, hallelujah. <laughs> Amen. And Ray Joe, um, was that Sophia you brought over here? Okay, when I was holding her, I had this overwhelming desire to like take her up on the platform and I asked the Lord when you walked away, I said, God, what was that? And I heard the Lord say, she will stand before crowds and demonstrate the wisdom of God. So I bless you, Sophia, in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. 
<laughs> Amen. And Theo, I heard the Lord say, as you prophesy over your family, 2020 will be very different. Because God says, I've put a word in you, and you, you're saying, this needs to change. And God says, you're right, keep speaking the change, and you will see it. Because of your faith. It says, when Jesus saw their faith, he said to the man, take up your bed and walk. And the Lord said, because of your faith, I'm go about to visit your children. Hallelujah. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Now, as I was prophesying that, I, I felt like the Lord was saying there's some people, as I was giving these words out, something resonated in your spirit. And the Bible says no word of prophecy is of private interpretation, meaning that if something was resonating in your spirit, it's for you as well. God is saying, I want to do that in your family, in your life as well. Hallelujah. Amen. And this is a season of breakthrough. Deanna, I just heard the Lord say, uh, you think I've opened doors? You ain't seen nothing yet. <laughs> it's bigger than what you think. So lift your sights and proclaim what I've put in you because I want to do that, says the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. 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 Thank you, Jesus. We serve an awesome God. Amen. And I'm telling you, this is an exciting year. I, I really am excited about what God is saying, what God is speaking, the doors that God is opening. Hallelujah. And Bruce, I just heard the Holy Spirit say, You've been praying and contending for years with regard to ministry, and God says you're about to see things break open in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Woo! Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Father, I thank you for the prophetic utterance that is here right now. And Father, we just proclaim the word of the Lord. And we thank you, God, that no word of God, no word spoken by God is without power to bring itself to pass. And we give you thanks for that in Jesus' name. Amen. Let's give him praise. Come on, church. Right before you have a seat, turn around to somebody and tell them that the best is yet to come. Welcome to Liberty. Awesome. You guys excited to be in the house of the Lord this morning? <laughs> pastor up here trying to take my electronics. Thank you, Pastor. Um, well, welcome to Liberty Church. This is the, uh, man, it's the final Sunday service of 2019. You guys excited about that? It's always nice when you get something new. Everybody, you know, most of the time during this time of year gets something new during Christmas time. And, and uh, this next year we get... Uh, a, a new calendar 2020 with new vision and new words from God for you guys and and uh, just one last word of encouragement because this is something that I always like to do and even in my house in my own personal life is is any opportunity you get speak life amen there is power of life and death in your tongue and so maybe maybe the promise that God has given you this year didn't come to pass just continue to speak life over that promise and over your life. Amen? Amen. Amen. Awesome. Well, if this is your first time here, welcome to Liberty Church. Can we give our first time guests a, a big hand? We want to make you feel welcome and at home. Um, if this is you, there's a card uh, that looks like this on the screen. It's orange. It's right there in front of you in the seat. Uh, just take that out. Fill out some information. We'd love to just connect with you and, and help you on this journey and welcome you into the Liberty Church family. You can drop it in the offering bucket or see uh, guest services and and uh, meet some amazing, amazing people. Um, so thank you for coming. And maybe you're here and you've been coming a couple times, just trying to check it out two or three times and you haven't yet filled one of those cards out. This is also for you. We'd love to connect with you. Amen? Amen. Well, as we prepare to uh, take up the tithe and offering, um, you know, this morning as I was driving on my way here, um, I, I began to hear just this, uh, you know, reach in and reach out. This, those are the the words that I heard. And, and as we sow into 
the house of God, as we sow into God's kingdom, as we sow into Liberty Church. Liberty Church is a church that reaches in and reaches out. And when you're faithful with your giving, when you're faithful with your generosity, we as a church has an opportunity to reach in to our local community. We reach into the, the local schools and bless the teachers and the students and families during times of need like Christmas. But we also reach out to the world. I mean, this, this video on Facebook is reaching out to the world. Not only do we send our pastors and teams all across the world, we send the word of God through social media. And with your faithfulness and your generosity, we continue are able to do that and more. So thank you for uh, giving into this house and into this church, and I promise you that you will be blessed with your faithfulness. Amen? Amen? Amen. God, we just thank you for the opportunity to sow, to sow into your kingdom so that you can reach in and you can reach out by using us as people. God, help those that are giving today in abundance to be blessed. God, and those that cannot give, God, I pray that you would supernaturally provide a seed for them to sow in Jesus' name. Amen? Amen. God bless you guys as you give today. Hi, everyone. My name is Mary Tess, and thank you for joining us today. Before we close out with today's service, we'd like to take a few minutes to tell you about some things coming up for you and your family here at Liberty. We have partnered with Alpha Pregnancy for 20 years. This outstanding organization has helped thousands of teens and women in crisis by providing medical, emotional, and spiritual support. If you'd like to help Alpha Pregnancy, grab a baby bottle in the lobby today, and throughout the month of January, drop your loose change into the bottle. It's as simple as that. You can drop off your bottle at event registration January 26th, and your donations will help this organization continue to impact the lives of those in crisis around Solano County. We all have them. They prevent us from making healthy choices, they stop us from growing closer to God, and they keep us from experiencing new opportunities. I'm talking about hurts, habits, and hangups. Sometimes all we need is a new start, somewhere to begin, a little push to get us back on the right track. The Journey Begins is a 12-step class for women designed to do just that. What if your best life is just 12 steps away? Register online today. Feel the nudge to lead a group? Take a step of faith and try it. We'll equip you with the tools you need to lead. Meet in your home, office, or your favorite coffee shop. Facilitate the discussion and care for the members of your group. Lives are waiting to be changed because of your willingness to lead. Sign up online today. It's that time of year when we fast for 21 days together. Fasting can be intimidating, especially for 21 days. We want to encourage you to take the plunge, make the commitment, and see what God does. If you're new to fasting, we have guides available at event registration. Visit us online to get this year's prayer points, details about noonday prayer, and our 24-hour prayer experience. For more information about anything you've heard today, stop by the event registration in the lobby or connect with us online to register for upcoming events. Calderon. I have been attending Liberty for six years now. I have been on two mission trips. Uh, the first two, well, both of them, I've been going to Perth, Australia, and then the first one I went to the Philippines for three months, and the second trip I went to, to Uganda, Africa. I've been to India, Hyderabad. I went to uh, Malaysia, Cambodia, and Nepal. For this next mission trip, I will be going back to Perth, Australia and joining staff with Youth with a Mission. As I prayed, God told me to commit four years to stay there. I will be joining a ministry um, there in Perth called Perth Pregnancy Support, where we will be like doulas going into the city and we will give free caring. Um, so we go and the moms that we will be working with are single moms um, that have no support. Some of them are refugees and we would go with them to all the doctor appointments, go with them while they have the baby deliver, and we would be their comfort person there, and we would do a two-week postnatal um, visit with them. We would also have classes for them, so we would want to teach them about comfort measures, new parent, um, parental um, education, and what to expect during delivery. 
Uh, so that's what we will be doing during the ministry. I will also be joining a school called Discipleship Training School. It's focused around young people. Yeah, we would go, as leaders of that, we would go and welcome um, teenagers all around the world and disciple them for three months, taking them further in the, into the relationship with God, showing them more about the Bible um, and getting them on fire for God, and then taking them for the last three months to any place that God has called us to go to. Uh, we, yeah, we would pray as leaders and yeah, we would go send them off to different nations um, so they can um, teach others what they've learned. Thank you so much, Liberty for supporting me and um, keeping me in your prayers while I'm on the mission field. If you would like to follow me um, as I say yes to God, I have a prayer card next to the mission tub and you could grab it and follow me on my journey as I say yes to God. Amen, hallelujah. Well, Aaliyah is, we're gonna pray for her in the next service. She will be leaving for four years. And as you can see, this 20-year-old has a call of God that she is stepping out to fulfill. She still needs to raise about 400 a month in regular support. So if you feel led to get involved and help her, I encourage you to get the information in the lobby and, and do just that. It'll be a blessing to her, but keep her in your prayers. Amen? Well, I want to talk to you about getting into alignment for your assignment. We are about to step into a new year, but in God's prophetic calendar, we have already stepped into the new Hebrew year. Uh, every year on the Day of Atonement, that marks the beginning of the new Hebrew year. October 8th was the beginning of the year 5780. This is the Hebrew year on the calendar. And God, the reason this is significant is because God always uses the Hebrew calendar and he always uses his people as markers for what he is about to do or is doing in the earth. And the Hebrew language is, uh, is a beautiful language. It is filled with hidden uh, uh, like symbols and, and movements of heaven and earth working together. It's an amazing language. And the Hebrews, in fact, uh, because of what God has done through this language, uh, consider it to be the hidden language of heaven. Uh, God is, has significantly done things uh, throughout history uh, off of the Jewish calendar. You know, there's a, the scripture says in Ecclesiastes that there is a time and a season for everything under the sun. God does things according to timing. In fact, in Galatians 4, it says that in the fullness of time, God brought forth his son born of a woman. And so uh, it, God's son showed up at the right time, at the right place. Even like the birth of John the Baptist, uh, the scripture says the angel appeared to Zechariah and said, I've come to answer your prayers. But Zechariah didn't understand at first what he was talking about because he's, he's too old. He's not praying any more prayers. Uh, and, and the scripture says the angel told him, I've come, you're, you and your, your wife Elizabeth are going to have a baby. And even though it seemed impossible because they were old in their years, uh, God said it is now time for that prayer to be answered, and it's going to be a supernatural uh, thing. And in fact, because uh, Zechariah didn't believe the angel at first, God struck him mute. He was not able to speak until uh, John the Baptist was born and, and until the day that Zechariah wrote on a piece of paper what his name will be, the name the angel gave him. And, and, and so uh, even like John's birth was significant and had a specific time and season uh, to be brought forth. And God always works in times and seasons. And we are moving into a new season prophetically on God's calendar. And, and it's important that we understand this because um, we are now in the 5780. 80 is the Hebrew symbol for the mouth. And, and so, uh, if you put that picture up there, guys, you'll see that, that the, the number uh, eight is the word pay, the letter pay, rather, and it, it represents the mouth, the mouth. And you, it means the word or expression or the breath that is expressed. 
And the mouth is the uh, expression of the breath of God. And notice inside this letter pay is a hidden letter called bet, which is their version of the letter B. So within this blank space is recognizable the letter bet, which means house, house. So the, the, the letter bet is significant in Hebrew because it speaks of the house of creation. The very first word in Genesis 1 is this, is this enlarged letter bet. It starts off with this first letter representing the house of creation. And it's interesting that in Genesis 1-1, God declares his creation. Amen. And so it, it, is, it is inferred here that inside this invisible letter pay uh, is the letter bet, which represents the word of God that created the heavens and the earth. In other words, it is the word that is the uh, picture of or the agency of creation behind the entire universe. And of course, Genesis 1-1 and John 1-1 clearly declares that to be the case. And then we see an early pictorial symbol on the far right there. You will see that uh, in, in writings in both the book print, manual print, and cursive, there's a little dot inside this area of the mouth. And scholars say this represents the divine spark uh, of the soul. In other words, God is going to anoint the mouth to declare. This is the year of declaration, divine decree. And so we have stepped into the decade of divine decree. That's what this is all about. And so uh, it's interesting that Hidden inside that letter is this, is this decree of God, and hidden inside of each one of you is the word, the promise that God has given you. You are pregnant with some promises that God gave you, and this is the decade for you to see that promise come to pass. Matt, I just heard the Holy Spirit say, you're pregnant with a promise that God spoke over you, and this is the decade that you will see that promise come to pass, specifically. And, and so, as you declare what God has given you, you're going to see the word of the Lord come to pass. I want to encourage you uh, to begin to declare some of those things that you let go of, that you, you stopped speaking, like Zechariah, you don't pray that prayer anymore. But now is the season, now is the time. God is saying. Amen? In Proverbs 25, verse 2, it says, it is the glory of God to conceal a thing, but it is the honor of kings to search it out. You see, God hides his, his wisdom in his word, and he hides things uh, from that, so that you have to search it out. In fact, the disciples asked Jesus, why do you teach in parables? He said, because it is given that you need to search out a matter, that when it, it's the, the wisdom of God is for those who are hungry, who will search it out. It's not just to be thrown around uh, and so, so Jesus would teach in parables so that people would search for the understanding and the meeting, and in searching, they would find the wisdom of God. So God is saying, uh, also what, what this word uh, means with the uh, inspiration of the mouth that is, that is hidden, he is saying that uh, that which is in your private conversation will become public in your public life. So watch what you say. Be careful with the words of your mouth. Death and life is in the power of the tongue. And we need to understand that we can release death and not realize it. And God is saying, be careful what you say in your home because it's gonna be seen in public. Amen. And so I wanna encourage you to begin to speak what God has given you. This is the decade to declare the word of the Lord. Oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. Amen? Amen. Hebrew scholars say that the number 80 also is the picture of prayer. It is the gematria of prayer. Uh, in other words, this is the decade of your prayers to be expanded and to declare what God is saying because God's going to do the impossible. Amen. Don't look at the possible. Look for the impossible because all things are possible to him who believes. Amen. 
Amen. So what I want to do right now is I want to kind of shift gears, and we're going to play a short video. It's about nine minutes long. And this video, the reason I'm going to play this whole nine-minute video is because this is a prophet in the body of Christ by the name of Dutch Sheets. And the Lord uh, was, spoke to my wife the other day in a dream, and she heard that kept hearing the name Dutch Sheets, Dutch Sheets. And she was like, I don't even... Like, I don't, I don't follow him. I'm not thinking about him. Why is God speaking that word? And, and so she, she stumbled upon this prophetic word for this new year. And when I saw it, I knew that, that this was a word that God was speaking for us. And rather than trying to just teach it, uh, I just felt like we need to hear from other voices. And I just want to take a few minutes and play an excerpt uh, of Dutch sheets because I believe that this is a word for you. And I want to encourage you to take some notes because you're going to hear some things that you need to take note of and write down because we're stepping into a prophetic decade and I want you to get ready for that. So with that, guys, let's go ahead and let's roll the video. Chuck has said prophetically, and I think he does this from the Hebrew number system, this is the decade of the decree. Is that right? That's what the number means, this decade. Now just to hear that, it's the decade of the decree. I, I heard the Lord say, he said to me, well, he said this to a prophet uh, to me in 1986. And I did not understand it at the time. He said, you will be a part of the fresh age of the Melchizedek order. The fresh age of the Melchizedek order. It's a fascinating study. But one of the main things, one of the, one of the primary things that had to do with that word was the Lord showed me that Melchizedek was both a king and a priest. And he showed me that I began to study the whole teaching, and of course as a type of Christ, who is the king and the priest, and then he says to us, we are a kingdom of priests, and we are a royal priesthood. So we, we have the kingly anointing of Jesus, but we have the priestly anointing of Jesus. And the priestly anointing goes this way. We offer up requests, incense, worship, praise. But as the kingly anointing, or in the kingly anointing, we decree. The kingly anointing is the ecclesia. The, the, the priestly anointing would be the bride. Now, let, let me back up and say, how many of you know ecclesia means not a building, or a service. How many of you know ecclesia is a word that was, that was a governmental term? Do you know that here? When Jesus said, I'll build my church, my ecclesia, he wasn't saying I'll build a building, an organization, a 501c3, or I'll build a congregation. So words like congregation, fellowship, church, uh, church bride, family of God, those are not synonymous. They are talking about the same people, but they don't mean the same thing. So even though we're the bride of Christ, we're the family of God, and we're the body of Christ, that's not what Jesus was talking about when he said, I'll build my church. He said, I'll build my legislature. I will build my government. My kingdom will have a government on earth, and I will give my government keys, the keys of my kingdom or authority, and they'll have the ability to bind and loosen. Those are governmental terms. Those are judicial terms that mean legally binding and legally dissolving a contract. You will be my legislative people, and the gates or government of hell will not prevail against you. My government will prevail over the government. Now, we haven't done that very well in the past, but we are progressing to the point in this reconstituting of things God is doing that we talked about last night, that the ecclesia is coming into a greater and greater understanding that we have more authority than the powers of darkness. We have more authority than principalities. And we can offer up as priests, but we can decree as royal priesthood and kings. So he said to me, you're going to be a part of this movement. And I heard the Lord say this movement of understanding ecclesia and kingly decrees. Back when I first moved into prayer movement, we didn't offer declarations and decrees. We just offered up petitions. Well, I heard him say to me, you will fully shift the nation when the praying church fully shifts from priestly intercession only to kingly intercession also. We have come into the year of the decree or the decade. 
And God says, we're going to start decreeing things like we've never decreed before. And I'm going to teach for a few minutes on the meaning of that word. There's a word in Hebrew that the Lord has emphasized for me. And it's a word used in three familiar verses having to do with decrees. He said in Numbers 23, 19, God is not a man that he should lie, nor the son of man that he should repent. Has he said it and will he not do it? Has he spoken it and will he not make it good? When he said, has he said it and will he not do it? The word do is asa, A-S-A-H. It's a strong word in Hebrew that means to perform, do, accomplish, but it also means to create. His words create. When he speaks, power is released to bring forth something, sometimes out of nothing. To shift, will you bind and loose as you say it? You don't bind. That's the way we bind and loose. That's the way we forbid and allow. He tells us what he wants here and through prophetic inspiration, and we say what he says. The, the New Testament word for confession is homologia, lagos, words. And then you say them, and the word literally means say the same thing. When you are, you don't. The error that came in confession was believing that we, whatever we, we could say anything we wanted, God had to do it, or God would back it up. But that's not biblical confession. Biblical confession is to say what he says. That's what the word means, say the same thing. So when you say what he says, then power is released from you, and God says, I'll create with those words. When you sing and you begin to sing prophetically over the region, God says, I'll create with those words, because you decree a thing, and it's established. No, but, but, but did he begin to say to me these passages? I want, you to, I want to keep reading. He says, has he said it? Will he, will he not assail with it? Has he spoken it? Will he not make it good? And then the prophet goes on to say, I have received a command to bless. And we don't, I don't know, we've missed this so long. God said, I'm going to do this, and my words are going to do this, 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 this. And then he said, now, they're, I'm going to do this through the words of my prophet. They were just words coming out of the heavens. The prophet said, I've given a command. I've been given a command to bless. And when I bless with my mouth, God says, I create with that. Amen. Jeremiah 1 12. Jeremiah is being called to his prophetic ministry. God says to him, Chapter 1, I've touched your mouth, and I've put my words in your mouth. I have put my words in your mouth. I have put my words that create and perform and accomplish things. I have put my words in your mouth. Let me give you another verse in the New Testament. Luke chapter 1, verse 37, when the angel came to Mary and said, you're going to have a child. She said, how can this be? I'm a virgin. She said, the Holy Spirit's going to overshadow you and put the seed of God inside of you. And then he says, for God, nothing shall be impossible. That's not the best translation of that verse. The literal translation of that verse is for no word spoken by God is without power. You cannot get more literal in a translation than, the, than that. No word spoken by God is without power. Whether, whether he says it through an angel, whether he says it through a prophet, whether he says it with you, through you, no word spoken by God is without power. So he says to Jeremiah, he touches his mouth, says, I'm going to talk through you. I'm going to say things to the nation through you, Jeremiah. I put my words in your mouth and appointed you over the nations, over the kingdom. I'm going to say this. God says to you, I have appointed you over California. I have appointed you over your neighborhood. I have appointed you over your community, over your county. I have appointed you, and I'm going to put my words in your mouth. When you come to a meeting like this and you hear what God's saying to this community, you're supposed to be more than encouraged. 
You're supposed to take those words home with you and you're supposed to begin to say them because you are the voice of God in the region. He has put his words in your mouth. And when you open your mouth and say what he says, it creates something. And it also tears down things. I've called you and put my words in your mouth, Jeremiah, to pluck up and break down, destroy, overthrow, and then to build and plant. You're going to see something that you know isn't right. You're going to look at your government and you're going to be more than frustrated. You're going to know that you're anointed as the ecclesia of God to speak against that. Not against people, but against the powers of darkness and against what they're doing. And you begin to prophesy and say what God says. And when you say what God says, power goes forth out of your mouth because no word from God is without power. And he hovers with those words, and he creates with those words, and he's going to do that with you in this season. Over the next six months, the words of the ecclesia are going to ascend into the atmosphere over California and shift the atmosphere and shift the government. And by Passover, the Lord says, you will have shifted things in this state. By Passover, that's Easter, you will have shifted things in this state. Amen. You have been appointed over California. You have been appointed over your workplace. You have been appointed over your neighborhood. You are God's voice to those people. And when we put God's words in our mouth, it is no longer us just speaking, but it is the word of the Lord given by the Lord that is speaking to the people. And those words carry authority and they carry power. When Daniel was praying in Daniel 9, he saw that it was the season, the time for a prophetic word to come to pass. So in chapter 10, he begins to fast and pray and decree that prophetic word. And the Bible says that after 21 days, the angel of the Lord appeared unto Daniel. And the angel said, oh, Daniel, greatly beloved, I have come because of your words. Catch that. Because of your words. He says, but it took me 21 days because the prince of Persia fought against me. What is that? Someone asked me last night after service if that was a, a particular king or a prince that is spoken of in the following chapters. And I said, no, because a earthly king or earthly prince cannot stand against an angelic host, cannot stand against the angels of God. One angel in the Old Testament killed 185,000 soldiers in one night. There's no contest between an angel of God and a physical king or prince. This is talking about the principalities and powers of the air that the New Testament gives us revelation regarding. This is a spiritual host, a spiritual opposition to the prayer coming to pass. But I want you to see something and be encouraged by this because when you put the word of the Lord in your mouth and you begin to pray and declare what God has said, it says, Daniel, when you humbled yourself and began to pray, the word humble is a reference to the fast. We're gonna go on a 21-day fast and we do this every year because we are humbling ourselves and we are positioning ourselves. The Bible says, humble yourself under the mighty hand of God and he will exalt you in due time. So fasting is a way for you to physically humble yourself. We're gonna go without food. What kind of fast you go on is between you and the Lord. We have a fasting guide that you can get uh, on, off of our website or you can get in the lobby. I encourage you to join us and go on this fast because we are going to believe God for breakthrough and we're going to proclaim what God has spoken over California. We're gonna proclaim what God has spoken over your life, and as you do that, you're going to see that there is going to be a spiritual warfare that is engaged, and you're going to see breakthrough come to California. You're going to see breakthrough come to your house. Hallelujah. Amen.
So this is spiritual, and, and the church has been quiet too long. The reason we're in this mess is because Adam should have opened his mouth, but he kept his mouth shut when he should have been saying something. And the reason we are in this mess that we have here in California is the church has been silent when we should have raised our voice and we should have declared the word of the Lord. Amen. And it's time for the silent majority to rise up, the moral majority, amen, to, to get their voice back and for you to begin to proclaim, thus saith the Lord. Amen. And as we do that, this is the decade of decree, and you are going to see that you will be the voice in your region. All you got to do is read Ezekiel 37, and you can see the power of saying what God tells you to say, because it sets things into motion and causes the supernatural to be released. You know, in Matthew 16, uh, Peter gets this revelation, and Jesus said, because of this revelation, he said, I will build my ecclesia, my legislative assembly is what the TPT says, and the power of death will not be able to overpower it, and I give you the keys of the kingdom, and whatever you forbid on earth will be forbidden in heaven, and whatever you release on earth will be released in heaven. In other words, you have been given the legislative authority. We have the power to bind and to loose. You know, it says that when, when, when it was prophesied by Isaiah in the ninth chapter, the sixth verse, for unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given, it says, and the government will be upon his shoulders. We are the body of Christ. The government is on the shoulders are in the body. And we are the legislative government in this region for Christ. All of the Christians are. That's what the word ecclesia means. It doesn't mean a church assembly as we think of it. It means the legislative ruling assembly. We are the ones with the authority, with the power to change things. And when we silence our voice and the enemy raises his voice, then darkness will prevail. And that's what we see right now. 700,000 people left the state of California because of the darkness that is prevailing in this state. And it's time for the church to rise up and speak. Use your voice and say what God is saying. Hallelujah. Amen. We need to quit complaining about California, and we need to start prophesying over California and say what God says. Death and life is in the power of the tongue. Amen. Do you believe that? Amen. It's time to decree what God has said, because that's what a decree is. It is saying what God is saying. And we see that aptly illustrated both by uh, Daniel and Ezekiel. So a prophetic decree is not our own will or our own wish. What is it then? It is, it is not even your personal desire. It is making known the will of the Father. It is thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. It is a declaration of the Father's will in the earth. That's what it is. That's what a decree is. And it is God giving you a divine command because you are his agency. We are his agent. He works with mankind. Listen, God is not going to just do it uh, because, you know, well, if it's his will, okay, sirrah, sirrah, whatever will be, will be. No, that is demonic theology. That's not biblical theology. Biblical theology is God declares his will according to Scripture. He doesn't do anything except he first reveal it to the prophet so that the prophet can come into agreement and proclaim it, and then it comes to pass. Why? Because God said he's, the, the heavens belong to the Lord, but the earth he has given to the sons of men. He has given dominion and authority in this earth to the sons of man. That's why Jesus became a man, hallelujah. And then he took that authority away from the devil and he said, now all authority is mine and I'm giving it back to you, the church. Amen. And now, whatever you bind is gonna be bound, whatever you loose is gonna be loose. It's time to speak up. It's time to pray. It's time to make your voice heard. And one of the ways, of course, we can make our voice heard here in 
in California is through something called voting. Yeah, you know that bad word called voting? Uh, did you know, this is, this is a startling statistic. Let me just uh, get over here and read this to you. Did you know that according to uh, California State Senator Shannon Grove, who did the research on this, uh, she said, uh, she told this to me personally, only 50% of the church in California is registered to vote. Only 50%. And only half of them vote in a presidential year, which is 25%, and only half of them vote in a non-presidential year, which is 12 and a half to 15%. And then she said, if the church alone in California registered and voted righteously, we could turn the face of California overnight. We could literally change California overnight. These ungodly laws that we have forcing us now to do things that are against the word of God could be reversed overnight if we put the right people in office. Amen. I'm going to just speak it. I don't care if it makes every de demon in hell angry. I'm going to say the truth. We are, we are called to not only speak the word of God in prayer and in prophetic declaration, but we have been given something that most nations don't have. We have the authority in the hands of the elect, uh, in the people, so that we can elect the representative government to, to pass righteous laws. But the problem is, the church has been silent, so the devil's taking advantage of it. Amen. And I just want to stir up the body of Christ, and I hope this goes viral on, on social media, because the church needs to rise up, get registered, and vote righteously. It's not about red versus blue. The only red we need to be concerned about is the blood of Jesus. How does this align with the Spirit of God and with the Word of God? And if we will raise a righteous vote, we could literally change things in our nation. Oh, it'll make the devil angry. Don't, don't, don't doubt that. But it's time for the church to rise up. Amen? Amen. God's calling us to be the church. I hope you receive that, and I hope you believe that. I want to read to you a prophecy that was uh, given by a prophetess by the name of, of uh, Lena Vosser from Brisbane, Australia. It's interesting to me that God is now raising up prophets from other nations to prophesy over California and over these United States. Listen to what she said. I had an encounter with the Lord and I saw the Lion of Judah positioned over the United States. He was huge with one of those paws, each paw placed over the four corners of the United States. And as he posi was positioned over the, the nation, he opened his mouth and came out with a loud roar. It was the roar of Joel 3.16. The Lord will roar from Zion. He will thunder from Jerusalem. The earth and the heavens will tremble, but the Lord will be a refuge for his people, a stronghold for the people of Israel. It is the roar of God releasing the fear of God across the nation. It was the roar of his authority that decreed nothing can stand against my power and who I am. And I got news for the devil. He is not the greater one. Jesus is the greater one. He is the lion of the tribe of Judah. Hallelujah. And this roar was released, I saw John 3, 16 exploding. For God so loved the world, he gave his only begotten son, that whoever believes in him should not perish but have eternal life. And his roar was being released. It began to demonstrate his power and authority. And the roar of his heart was releasing the sound of the gospel louder than ever before. And then I heard the laugh of God. And the scripture, Psalms 2, 4, he who sits in the heavens laughs. See, God laughs at the plans and strategies of man. Man thinks he's wise, but God is the one who is in control. control. He's in charge, amen? He says, nothing will stand against my plans for what I am decreeing and establishing within the United States. I am releasing 
my laugh of victory over the nation. I am stepping in, I'm stepping in. Decree it with me, the king of glory is stepping in. So I come into agreement with that and I wanna say, in the name of Jesus, the king of glory is stepping in over these United States, in Jesus' name, amen. He said, I am the one who will have the last laugh and nothing will stand against my plans and purposes. I am Yahweh. Then I heard the Lord say in my spirit, all delays broken, all delays broken. Now I decree, accelerate. There will be a mighty demonstration of my divine justice upon the nation like never before. The roar of my justice is being released over the nation. It is not only breaking delay, but it is releasing divine impartation of my justice into the land by my spoken word. It is going to be carried in the nation and released into other nations by the decree of my people. Amen. Do you believe that? Come on, I believe that in Jesus' name. <laughs> Hallelujah. And then she heard Isaiah 61 and 2, Arise, shine, for your light has come. The glory of the God has risen upon you, and darkness will cover the earth, but, and deep darkness the people. But the Lord will rise upon you, and his glory will appear on you, and nations will come to your light, and kings to the brightness of your rising. Then she saw this wave like flowing water across the state, and it was, wa it was the washing of the blood of Jesus. Amen. That's exciting. And we need to start saying what God is saying over this state. Amen. Instead of complaining like the 700,000 who did and left, we need to start saying it is now time for California to have an encounter with the living Christ. Hallelujah. Amen. Roar, Lion of Judah, roar. And then I want to read one more quick prophecy by Nate Johnston, another prophetic voice. And he said, a few nights ago I had a dream. I was flying in the United, uh, on a plane in the United States, and I felt like I was on assignment from the Lord to go to different cities to pray and wake up what was spoken over those regions. By the way, I met some intercessors at a conference a couple of months ago who are doing just that. They're going from region to region and they're praying prophetically what God is saying, declaring, doing exactly what this uh, dream that, um, that he had here from the Lord. This is actually happening with a group of prophets. And, and then also at our state capital, what's, when's the date again? On January 11th, that's a Saturday, write that down, January 11th. There is a call to the prophets in the state of California and they are gathering and converging on the Capitol. So on Saturday morning, January the 11th, there's gonna be a massive prophetic gathering at the state Capitol in Sacramento and you're invited to join us and we're gonna begin to make some prophetic decrees over this state and over our legislators, amen? And so I just wanna encourage you to be a part of that, hallelujah. Uh, and, and you don't want to miss what God's doing. If you're watching this on social media, you're invited to join us and pray with us in Jesus' name. So the, the vision goes on. Suddenly, I felt like warm oil was flowing all over me, and I heard a sound. What is the sound? And I heard it's the voice of healing coming back, healing for families in the earth and revival in homes and in families. And I woke up in the, pl in the plane, the dream was, a sp was specific about a ministry call and a mandate to pray over regions and cities in the nation. And I was instantly uh, taken in travail in prayer as I, as I went to these places and I could sense a deep connection to the land as I was praying and waking up the words and prophecies and destinies of the region were coming to me. And in many places, these cities are pregnant with promise, but there have been few midwives who are stewarding this call to contend with heaven over them. Uh, for those of you who don't understand that spiritual language, uh, midwives, it's really a reference to intercessors who are praying and giving birth to what God wants done in a region, hallelujah. And that's what we need to do. We need to have some prayers to give birth to the purpose of God. Amen? So during our 21-day fast, we want to do what Daniel did. We want to fast and pray and 
cooperate with God to give birth to what God desires to have done. And we know this is biblical because the scripture is very clear uh, in, uh, in Ezekiel 22, verse 30, I sought for a man among them who would make up a wall and stand in the gap, that's called intercession, before me on behalf of the land, that I should not destroy it, God says, but I could not find no one. Therefore, I have poured out my indignation upon them. I have consumed them with the fire of my wrath, and I have recompensed their deeds on their heads, says the Lord. Now, what is he saying there? He's saying that God didn't want to bring judgment to Sodom and Gomorrah, but because he could not find a man who would stand in the gap, he couldn't find someone who would pray, he was forced to fulfill his own word and keep his promise. So judgment came. So this really illustrates the fact that God co-labors with man to bring about his purpose in the earth. And it's essential that we pray and understand our part because we are co-laboring with God like a midwife helping to give birth to what God wants said and what God wants done. Are you catching that? It's important that we do this, okay, because this is what God is saying. This is what God is doing, hallelujah. So in, in this dream, he goes on and says that as I was praying, I heard the Lord say, we are stepping into a new prayer movement unlike anything we have seen before. It is the mobilization of the church to arise and to bring the earth into complete order. It's the call of God to bring the earth into alignment with heaven. As we, as God's people, align ourselves with God and in prayer and then make these prophetic declarations. What's a prophetic declaration? It's when you say what God shows you and tells you to say over a region. That's when things shift. That's when things happen. I told you a story two years ago when I was in uh, Mindanao region of the Philippines and the spirit of prophecy came on me and God said prophesy against the spirit of terrorism that has plagued this region. And as I began to prophesy, uh, the Holy Spirit had me deal with the spirit that was driving Abu Sayyaf in that region. And as I prophesied it, I remember saying to myself, I should not be saying this kind of stuff. And I heard the Holy Spirit loud and clear in my heart say, you are not, I am. And so then I repeated what God was saying even bolder and stronger. And I prophesied that an end was coming to that reign of terrorism. And nine days later, these pastors sent me the front page clippings off of their newspaper saying that the head terrorist cell of Abu Sayyaf all turned themselves in along with all their weapons and it ushered in a whole new era of peace and tranquility in the Mindanao region. Now, is that coincidental? No, no, not any more than Daniel chapter 10 is coincidental because the same thing happens in Daniel chapter 10. By the time you get to the end and to the next chapter, the same thing has happened in the natural that I just described. Because God does things spiritually when we put his word in our mouth and declare the word of the Lord. It's not about you. It's you speaking what God has said because God's purposes shall be accomplished. Hallelujah. And so we have to cooperate with God and work with God. Okay, so what is this uh, voice of healing? Well, after World War II, there were two evangelistic movements that were reviving the United States. There was a revival that hit the United States. And one of them was through Billy Graham and the Billy Graham Crusades. As you, as you are familiar with, there were hundreds of thousands of people who went to those stadiums and gave their life to Jesus. And this was a major move of God. Another one was the healing revival that was taking place. And there was a, a man by the name of Gordon Lindsay who started a magazine called The Voice of Healing. And the voice of healing was chronicling all of the miraculous testimonies, miracles that were occurring in the United States. If you've been here any length of time, you've heard me share that my great aunt, Vernie, was part of that healing 
movement, that healing revival. She knew William Brannan, uh, Oral Roberts, A.A. A. Allen, Jack Coe. These were leaders of the healing revival. Leaders, these were not perfect men. If you study their lives, you will discover that they weren't perfect. But God has never used perfect individuals to bring about his will. Only one was perfect, and they crucified him. Hallelujah. Amen. So God is saying the voice of healing is going to come back. There's going to be a return to miracles. And, you know, that's been prophesied over liberty. And I believe we're about to have a breakout of miraculous things. We're already seeing the trickle of it. We're seeing supernatural healings and miracles take place on a very small scale. But God wants to do something massive like he did in the voice of healing right after World War II. Amen? And so <clears throat> I'm going to end with, he goes on and says, and I heard the Lord say that he's going to break demonic strongholds and cycles off of families. He's going to give families a new legacy. Amen. There's some families here that need a new legacy in Jesus' name. And God's going to give a new, leg, a new legacy. And he said, the Lord said, California shall be my forerunner. And California was significant. And so I prophesied over this state. And I asked the Lord, why California? And he said, California shall be the forerunner once again. Hallelujah. And so I believe that. I believe that. We are on the precipice of a major outbreak of the Holy Spirit. And as we go into this new year, I want you to join us in fasting and prayer. We're, we're going we're gonna to get into that in the weeks to come as we start our fast. I think it's, what, January 4th or something. We start into our fast. And I want to encourage you to to join us on that fast. We have a fasting guide you can download off of our website or you can get in the lobby. But go on a season of fast. Go without some food and give that time to prayer because you're gonna see some breakthroughs. The Lord spoke to me yesterday when I was praying and said that there are some people, Richard, in your church that have secret sins. And God says, as you fast and pray, I'm gonna not only break the power of those secret sins off of your life. But God says, I'm gonna cancel the seeds that you have sown, and I'm going to release my redemptive grace. And God wants his people to be set free, hallelujah. Amen. You don't need to be in bondage. You don't need to get under condemnation, but I want you to receive the freedom of the Holy Spirit because we're stepping into a new season, hallelujah. This is a prophetic time, a prophetic season. Some of you need to prophesy over your business. You've been complaining about why this, and I don't understand that, and the Lord is saying, change your language. Death and life is in the power of your tongue. Point to your business, point to your business checkbook, prophesy over your business, and say, hear the word of the Lord. Amen. Some of you have some promises that God gave you. You need to start resurrecting those promises. You need to say what God is saying. It's time to declare. It's time to dust off the dust off of some of those prayers that you no longer pray. Those dreams that you have let died because God is saying, now is the time. Now is the season. Let me pray for you. Father, I thank you for the prophetic unction that is here right now. And I thank you, Lord, for the word of the Lord that we have received. And Father, I thank you that as we declare what you have said, it shall come to pass. Lord, even as Mary said to the angel, be it unto me according to your word. For no word that comes from the mouth of God is without power. And so I thank you, Father, that there's power to bring about your word. And so you said it, and it shall be so. So be it unto us as you have spoken. We agree, and we say yes to what you have said and what you have declared over us. I pray for those who have let go of their dreams They've stopped praying those prayers. They've let go of ministry. They've let go of the hope that they once had. And I pray that there would be a resurrection of those dreams 
of that hope. God, that you would speak new life, resurrection life over the promise that you gave. And Father, I thank you that this will be a decade of fulfillment, that this is a season of a divine alignment. As we get into alignment, your will will be done. I thank you for revival in California, Lord. Father, let it, let it be birth. Let it start with us. God, let us be right in the middle, right in the epicenter of what you want to do, God. Lord, that's your promise. That's your word. So we come into agreement and we say, so be it, Lord. And we give you thanks in Jesus' wonderful name. Amen. Amen. Well, receive that. Be blessed. Hallelujah. Tell the neighbor sitting next to you it's time to declare. Well, go in peace. We love you. We'll see you next week.